a spy who didn't rely solely on gadgets and disguises. No, she was a master of seduction, and she knew just how to use it. She was none other than Mata Hari, a German spy and an exotic dancer who seduced all men. She was a spy who had men wrapped around her little finger. Imagine Mata Hari using her seductive ability to manipulate her targets. But there is a haunting theory surrounding her legacy. Was this exotic dancer by any chance responsible for the death of 50,000 soldiers? Moreover, did she willingly choose the path of espionage or was she forced into it against her will? Let's find out. It is the year 1905 and Paris is ablaze with excitement. This is Matahari, a woman whose dances radiate an exotic mystique capable of capturing hearts and minds with a single sway of her hips. Matahari took the stage in Paris, weaving stories throughout her dances. She claimed to have a fascinating background that started in a sacred Indian temple. According to her, she was given the name Matahari, meaning Eye of the Day, by a wise priestess who taught her ancient dances. In reality, she was actually born as Margaretha Gertrude Zell in a small town in Holland. Her journey from there to fame and prosperity was truly remarkable. Let's travel to Malaysia, where she spent some time. It was there that she was exposed to Indian and Javanese culture, which later influenced her performances. She gained a superficial understanding of the dances and soaked up the richness of the region. What an extraordinary experience it must have been. As you all know, life is not always a fairy tale and Matahari's personal life had its share of difficulties. Her relationship with her former husband, a soldier in the Dutch army, was unhappy and filled with infidelity and even abuse. She left Malaysia and returned to Europe in search of freedom and happiness. Her journey began there. From Russia to France, her performances captivated audiences with mesmerizing dance. She used to captivate audiences by gracefully undressing during her performances, creating an unforgettable and mesmerizing experience. In the midst of World War I, being a Dutch citizen in a neutral country had its perks. She hopped from France to the Netherlands, making pit stops in Spain and Britain. But little did she know, someone had their eye on her every shimmy and shake. Then comes the intense affair between Matahari and Captain Vadim Maslov. Sparks flew like fireworks in the night sky, but tragedy struck when Maslov was wounded, losing his left eye in aerial combat. Her world was about to take an unexpected turn. Here entered the French Dejum Bureau. They made her an offer she couldn't refuse. If she agreed to become a spy for France, they'd let her visit her injured lover. Now that's what I call a tempting twist in the plot. Matahari had a decision to make dance with danger or abandon her beloved captain. French agents planned to exploit a seductive dancer to extract secrets from Germany's Crown Prince Wilhelm. But here's the twist. It turned out that the prince was a playboy, not a brave warrior, living a lavish lifestyle with politicians. But the German government desperately wanted to sweep the prince's reckless behavior under the rug. They even had plans to label his father as Cuckoo and kick him off the throne. It was a game of shadows where appearances meant everything and Matahari found herself caught in the whirlwind of political tricks and turns. Now in November 1916, Matahari found herself on a ship called Zealandia, cruising from Spain. Suddenly, the ship makes an unexpected stop at the British port of Falmouth. And guess what? Matahari gets slapped with a You're Under Arrest sticker. She is suddenly taken to London. There, she undergoes intense questioning that is unlike anything she has ever experienced before. Who's in charge of the interrogation? None other than Sir Basil Thompson, the master of counter-espionage at the New Scotland Yard. After her arrest in London, she admitted to working for the Bureau but later encountered uncertainty regarding her admissions. He sought assistance from the German attaché in Madrid, offering French secrets. Messages intercepted by the Dojian Bureau exposed her as Agent H-21, a German spy. Desperate times call for desperate measures, right? The Germans, tired of waiting for valuable information, decide to reveal themselves. They expose Matahari to the French authorities, setting the stage for her epic downfall. It's February 1917 and inside St. Lazari prison. There she was accused of being a spy. But what did she do, you ask? The courtroom became the hottest show in town. She stood accused of divulging vital information about the Allies' formidable new weapon, the tank. Can you imagine the chaos that ensued? It was alleged that her actions led to the deaths of 50,000 soldiers. The weight of these accusations pressed heavily upon her, casting a dark cloud over her future. And then it happened. 
The verdict dropped like an explosion. Death. She refused the solace of a blindfold. She met her fate head on, facing the firing squad. In the midst of war, this enchanting woman stepped into the spotlight. Some said she was a German spy, while others claimed she worked as a double agent for the French. But guess what? The Germans thought she was a failure, while the French called her the greatest woman spy of the century. Who's playing who? And we wrap things up. It was clear that the danger, passion, and secrecy were Matahari's companions. We can't help but wonder, was she truly the cunning spy she was portrayed to be, or a pawn caught in a larger game of deception? What do you think? Comment your thoughts below.